All right, welcome back to Talking Fitchburg and joining us uh, via the phone, the worldwide phone network. That's right, WWPN. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It sounded pretty cool. If he's still on the line, it's Phil Dawson. Good morning, Phil. How are we doing? Morning, guys. I'm doing well. Thanks for joining us today. Sorry we missed you yesterday. That's what? Yeah, huh? You made us stall a little bit for you yesterday, <laughs> but... I blame you guys. <laughs> That's probably fair. Hey, That's probably well, fair. Thanks, bro. <laughs> we really appreciate you. So uh, we'll wrap this up and uh, talk to him next time. Um, all right, so, Phil, we had uh, we had the Badgers over the weekend uh, taking on Maryland and, and getting a victory, uh, but Mr. Corey didn't get on the plane. No, that was the surprise game time, and it was interesting. I, was, I did the pregame show this week, and, you know, I talked to Mike Lucas, and that was uh, – kind of protected information at the time that we talked, you know, and he's telling me, you know, what he thinks is going to transpire in the game, and he's telling me how, you know, he really thinks this will come down to the Badgers in that pass game and how they're going to protect Joel Stavi, you know, kind of hanging the hints out there. Right. And I'm going, what? No. They got <laughs> Corey Clement. What are you talking about? But then it turned out, you know, that Corey didn't even make the trip again, that he's still battling back from, uh, the groin injury and the and actually not the groin the uh, the hernia surgery so um, that was a surprise and then and then it turned out to be what I think we all expected without having Corey available it was going to be about special teams and what Joel Savi could do and um, special teams was huge especially in that first half the fake punt the kick return for a TD um, for Maryland too you know they they are a tr- the one thing that they are good at is special teams. So um, it turned out and played out the way things, I think, we thought they would. And then uh, Joel Savi, talking about him again and, you know, the, the quarterback position, he was not great in that first half. And he came back and hit on 10 of 11 passes to start the second half and led him on another touchdown drive. And I think this, just, this team is so used to playing, you know, without the way that we are usually – thinking and talking about Badger football without a, a dynamic running game that, that they're able to overcome the, the lack of running game that they do have. And I mean, Joe Schobert was the guy who led the team in rushing. <laughs> that was on a punt fake, and that's, your, that's a linebacker. So right. <laughs> uh, the good news is, is that they won. You know, they're still in the hunt. Iowa has two more games on their conference schedule, and you know, and to anticipate them to be the representative of the of the West Side, mm. of the Western Division in the in the in the Big Ten Championship game. But Wisconsin just is is, is rolling the way that they have to, and defensively, um, they've been better. But you know, they're, they're just doing what they have to do. It's been a, it's been a, an interesting season up to this point because of all the things that they've had to deal with, and they've dealt with them all, which is. Uh, which I think is a pretty good sign about the the guy that they have there as head coach and Paul Chris. Yeah, I think it's been a really great season with them. And boy, would I love to ask you ten more questions about this Badger team. But we've got a bye week this week, so we'll uh, let them rest and and we'll move on to the Packers then. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, Packers go six and two. Uh, and what seemed like a game that was over at halftime, you know, they must have got their butts chewed out at halftime and came back out and and tried to catch up, but. What's your takeaway from this, Phil, uh, and this team, the way it's been going the last couple of weeks? Well, I think the, the real takeaway is that you faced two of the best teams in the NFL and the Panthers and the Broncos the last two weeks. Despite Denver losing, they're still you know a, a, a one-loss team now, and the Panthers are an undefeated squad in um, in, in one of the one of the two undefeated squads in the league. So it's really it's really about the competition, I think. And um, when the Packers play San Diego, I think there was a, a game plan built from what we saw Philip Rivers do that the last two quarterbacks were able to take advantage of. And, the, and with some injuries in the secondary, they're still trying to figure out how to slow down these teams that are throwing the football all over the place. And Cam Newton had a huge day, and they got some big throws early, and they got up, and we saw – you know, the I think the real turning point was when B.J. Raji and Julius Peppers got into it with Ha Ha Clinton Dick, and that kind of fired everybody up, and and that was good for this team. They needed a kick in the pants, so to say, and they got it, but just couldn't overcome it. And Rogers throwing a pick on the, the you know the last play just 
just sealed it. So I, they're still very, very good. They're still one of the favorites. They're still um, capable of beating anybody in this league and are going to have to figure out a way to do that potentially on the road once they hit the playoffs because um, I don't know if, you know, they they likely won't have home field advantage the whole way through. Right. Uh, based the way Ca- uh, Carolina has played and if they continue to play the way they do. And so if Carolina will have a head-to-head, you know, matchup one. And, and then it puts a little more pressure on Green Bay for winning the actual division because Minnesota won again. And they're winning right. in ways, you know, that good teams do, that if it's close, that they finish the team off, something the Packers weren't able to do against Carolina. So, um depending on Teddy Bridgewater's health, those matchups with Minnesota uh, will prove to be huge down the stretch here, and it should be a lot of fun. The, the race got more interesting because the Packers hadn't, have not been a dominant team the last two weeks and were dominated through about six and a half quarters of the last two games. So um, it puts more pressure on it, makes the season more interesting, and then it's more it's more fun to talk about because if they're just <laughs> rolling, you go, okay, yeah, let's get to the playoffs. Now it's like they got stuff to figure out. So I got a question. What what's your take? What do you think with the line, the offensive line right now? I want to know what your take is on that because that was kind of a shock watching them for me at least on Sunday. Well, the last couple of weeks, it, mean, it's been rough. The last, specifically the last two games, and again yeah. that gets back to the level of competition. The, and and granted, Car- Carolina's front four aren't the same as Denver's. Denver's really good rushing the passer. That's something that that they do. Um, so we're talking offensive line. The Packers are supposed to have the best one that they've had, a bunch of continuity, a bunch of players who've been doing this for a long time. There's no injuries up front. And the protection of Aaron Rodgers hasn't been good. Um, and, and you know what? It goes right back to winning the trenches. And they, they haven't done that the last two weeks. And I think it's, again, because the level of competition. That's the competition that they're going to face. They're going to have to figure it out. They haven't had a run game the last two weeks. That takes pressure off the offensive line because those D linemen and linebackers have to pay attention to the running backs, and that really hasn't shown in the last two weeks, which is a big deal. And so we'll see, again, how does that work itself out. Eddie Lacy from games 10 through 17 a year ago had 700-plus yards. He's going to have to figure a way to do that again. Right. So it's a question they have to they have to solve because that will be, um, you know, I don't want to say the downfall, but it will put that it'll put them in a spot that 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 is not good when you end up taking on teams of higher caliber on the defensive line, and and so it's it's one of these question marks, and it'll be it'd be interesting to see how they do figure that out. All right, Phil. Real quick, um, the Bucks are going for their uh, straight. Uh, is it their fifth straight win tonight? If, yes, if it could is. be and, fifth straight. And and that hadn't last year. When did we achieve that last year? Like January, <laughs> February. January, correct. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it took until January for this team to win five straight games, and now they can do that tonight against the Celtics team that is going through some of the similar things, you know, um, that the Bucks are in terms of youth and. Uh, new coach and figuring things out. They got the old Butler coach Brad Stevens, who's in his third year there, and um, you know they have a ton of draft picks. I mean, they have a, a longer window of turning into a successful team. Um, but, so it should be a good matchup tonight, nonetheless. That you know they have some players that maybe we don't all know and and can appreciate. But what they do is they play smart basketball, and that's something that has changed over these last four games or even five with the Bucks without Michael Carter Williams being available because of injury, mm-hmm. uh, their turnover numbers have gone way down. <laughs> Defense was a problem in the first, you know, three games of the season. And part of that, it's easy buckets that other teams are getting because the Bucks turn the ball over way too much. And part of that issue is your point guard and Michael Carter Williams. Well, he's been out the last few games. And as it turns out, the turnovers have cut down. The defense has gotten better. They haven't allowed a hundred points in the last four games. And, you know, six turnovers leading into baskets, that puts teams over 100. So um, the defense has been better. They cut down on the turnovers. Obviously having Giannis playing the way that he is, he's averaging 20-plus, getting Jabari Parker back, playing a few minutes here and there. I uh, got in the fourth quarter in the last game. So, um, All right, Phil, it. we appreciate it. To watch too. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to cut you off there, Phil. Uh, Thank you for uh, tuning in with us today, and we'll catch you back on Monday.
Okay, sounds good. All right, thanks, Phil. All right, we'll be right back. Let's talk Fitchburg.